All right, guys, let's kick it off. So I <laughs> uh, appreciate you guys sharing. Let's kick it off into some meat and potatoes. Um, I just want to open up the floor, guys. Like, this is your chance to either tell me something that's really working well in your business right now or something you've seen that's working well, or maybe something that you're having some, some issues on, some pain points, you know, things that you want to, areas you want to grow in. Uh, let's open it up. Feel free to be vulnerable and we will do our best to, to help you out. I have one. So since I joined the team um, and I'm Zahara Man Enrique's team, um, I've done like my, my production has just exploded. And to be honest, I'm feeling like burnout. And so I'm just wondering, like for some of you guys that have been in the business for a long time, how do you keep it up at a high level all the time? That's a great question. Who can help her out? <laughs> Um, I can help out or I could give, you know, some feedback. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> um, no, you're good. Go in there. Z, I think you really just need to manage some of your me time. Um, otherwise, you know, you're always, you get into that. Yes, yes, yes. I'm available. I'll be there. I can do it. And you kind of forget about giving yourself a little breather, a little break. So um, I would say just allocate, you know, whatever day time is good for you so that you can utilize the resources at the office, le leverage off the team and have that one day where you're not doing anything in real estate. You're just kind of enjoying your family yourself and you know, having that little reset day to start your week fresh and energized because it can become overwhelming. So be a little jealous for your me time. <laughs> okay, thank you. There we go. Mike, what you got, bro? Yeah, I mean, similar, but I connect it a little bit differently. Um, I think one thing um, I'll, I'll, before I say this, I'm not a real estate agent, I'm in sales, but I think it's pretty much exactly the same sense thing. So the, the two things I focus on are one, um, if you're available 24 seven, it's just an expectation thing for your client. It's just the wrong expectation, right? They want to work with you because of who you are as a person. Um, and that's why you guys are connected. So they, they're going to be understanding when you're with your kids or you're on vacation or what are those, whatever those things are. Um, as well as you get a text at nine o'clock at night, nothing is going to change if you reply to it at 730 in the morning, like nothing, like literally nothing is going to be different about that moment when you talk to them. So just setting the expectations for yourself, I think is most important. Um, and then I'm a big believer in playing hard. So like you got to go play, forget about money, forget about obligations, forget about all this stuff. Um, you'll see me on Friday, 11 AM, go hook my boat up and bolt for the lake. Cause I just need to hit the reset button. Um, so like, make sure you get that, get that time in, but those are my two big things I think to look at. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One thing I would also add is I would add making sure that you're setting, you know, like a vacation, maybe every quarter. So you kind of just put that in your calendar so that you have something to work hard towards. And then you get that, you know, week, maybe 10, 14 days off, and then you come back and hit it again uh, with, the, with along with everything that Michael and Blanca are saying, but definitely just putting that in your calendar and saying, hey, look, it, I'm going to take these these 10 days off each quarter. Yeah, I like that. It's all great advice, guys. I want to just all add something on to what you guys said. I think it's really a mindset shift in that we we need to honor ourselves first before anybody else, right? Like if you don't take care of yourself first, how can you go out and take care of others, you know, to the fullest capacity? So I think it's a mindset shift and where you have to be, maybe selfish is not the word, but you have to just really, you know, make it a priority that your mental well-being, your physical, your spiritual and all that stuff is the highest priority before anybody else out there. You know, and when you think about it that way, and you think about it in a way where if I'm not at my best, I cannot serve others at my best, you know, and you, and you use that for motivation and inspiration, then, then you will make the necessary changes, you know, that you have to. Um, as you get busier, having a routine or a schedule where you take care of yourself first, I think is extremely important. Like every single day, like I go to the gym in the morning, um, I listen to a podcast, I do my prayer, I do my meditation, I do all that stuff before I check any emails, before I respond to people, before I do anything. Like that's my protected time because it, it's almost like going out into the day, you're gonna go out and fight a battle. 
But before you fight that battle, you got to put your armor on, right? You don't want to go out to the battle with no armor or no, no sword or anything like that. So by you doing all these things, that's you putting your armor on and that's you getting prepared to go out there so that you could be at your best. Um, the other thing like they're all saying is, yeah, you got you to gotta implement some planned vacations, some planned time off. Um, as you, as we become busier in our lives and, and our businesses take over and our responsibilities take over, sometimes we get lost in, in, we forget to be who we were before we got into all of this stuff. Right. So I want everyone on here to think about like, who are you outside of real estate, outside of your business, even outside of your family or your significant other, who are you as an individual? What are the things that you love to do? before you had all these things get attached to you, right? Like I love playing music. I like working out, um, you know, stuff like that. So you got to still implement those things into your life. Um, and you can't lose yourself in this whole process, you know, cause you'll look back and you'll look back with regret and you'll be like, man, the last five years, I just worked my ass off and I didn't really do anything that really inspired me that I love to do, you know? So uh, it's really, it's really a mindset shift and it's, it's something that I think everybody struggles with who's trying to play at a high level. Um, thanks for, for, for opening up about that Zahar because I think it can, it can help a lot of people. Let's go on to another topic guys. What else do you got? Tell me something. Maybe let's do this. Guys. Go ahead. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I'm noticing my database is only a certain number of people. It's a modest number, but I'm trying to grow it. And I'm having a hard time taking the people that I meet, either door knocking or just general people I meet that are good people and adding them to my database. So I have warm calls to make because I feel like they're not going to remember my name and face. I may or may not remember theirs, but everybody on my database, I could probably say that they know who I am when I'm calling them and vice versa. Like we know each other. So how do I learn to take that modest number of people uh, and then actually maybe double it or triple it with and being okay with them. Maybe me not remembering their face, but maybe they remember mine. So I have one calls to make. Any suggestions around this guys? I think one, one person that could speak on this is Hervin because he's actually been growing his database through social media and actually having a system through like, um adding people on social media and then having a system to, to messing messaging them and following up with them so i think calling out Hervin right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah um basically what i do every morning and i'm upping the number every single day um i just like i kind of like so i go through my like um suggested friends database similar to what some people do like on linkedin but instead on facebook and um, I just like add them. And then at the same time, I send a message. It's really short. Just like, hey, um, Anna, um, my name is uh, Hervin. I'm a local Bay Area realtor. If you ever have any uh, buying or selling questions, let me know. Then little emoji, thumbs up. And like, I would say 50% of those people um, respond with a thank you. And they add me back, right? And then, uh, I would say like out of those 20, at least one responds back with like a legitimate question. Um, I picked up a um, $850,000 lead from that last week with like no objection. And, and she, um, before she even gave her current realtor a chance, she just came to me instead. Like, and I just added her. It was because, um, you know, I had a few like videos already and, I'd taken a picture with my client, like, so she kind of saw like a little success, right? Um, and what was even crazier is that I looked at our mutual friends. I also make sure we have some sort of mutual friends, even if it's like five or 10. Um, and on Facebook, that's really easy because you're going to be connected with those people anyways. They're always on your suggested. And a few, we had a few, a few um, realtor mutual friends. And I was like, whoa, like, I was like the no brainer, had a console, got her signed and now we're gonna go view homes this Sunday. And um, you could always, you know, making calls is probably like your strong suit, but that's, I'm still getting better at it. But social media is like, to me is like, 
easier. So I just, it doesn't hurt at all to just send a message or hit add. And um, I'm just doing that and it's working. And then just, just keeping it simple. And the people that don't want to add me, that's okay. <laughs> and then keep going and keep going and keep going. There's no lack of friends to add on Facebook. And that circle just grows daily. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Cool. Awesome advice, Hervin. Um, and I, what I want to point out, guys, is just the, uh, switching to a mindset of attraction based marketing versus like you directly marketing to people. It's up to you how you want to play this game, right? Like there's different ways to do it. You can take all your leads and you can put them like in an email campaign and you can send out emails regularly. Right. The only thing about that is like, that's like direct marketing, right? You're sending them something like, Hey, look at me. I'm the realtor. Do you need anything? Um, or you can do that same strategy like Herbin's doing and just add them on Facebook and then just document your success through social media and let them see you doing stuff versus you just hitting them up saying, hey, come do business with me. So I, I like both approaches. Um, I think there's value in both. So like all of the leads that we get, I add them to our email campaign and I'm sending out two educational videos a month. Um, the one, edu one video is a market update and one video is a home buying tip or a home selling tip. It's a simple two, three minute video giving them, you know, what's going on in the market. And it's, the market update is pretty much the same video every month because the market is a seller's market. So it sounds like a broken record. But what that does is that just keeps them top of mind. Uh, it keeps you top of mind with them. And then the home buying tip or home selling tip, I mean, there's unlimited of those tips that you can give someone. Um, giving them a short one minute tip and not even elaborating too much, just giving them the basics is, is, is gonna keep you top of mind with value. Now you do that and then you add everyone that you meet into Facebook and then you document your success. Every time you have a new sale, every time you have a five-star review, you add those same videos that you recorded to, to your social media. You show them some of your personal side, you with your friends and family, and they're seeing you now, right? They're seeing you on email. They're seeing you on, on social. Um, and what's going to happen is eventually when those people are ready, if, if, if you've built that credibility, they're going to reach out to you um, and send you a DM or something. You can also take a proactive approach and just give them a call. Hey, it looks like we follow each other. Just want to stay in touch. Do you need anything? So I like to have a multi-layered approach where I'm kind of doing maybe two or three things because I think it kind of hits people in a different way. Um, at the simplest form though, like what Herbin's doing of just adding people and just sending them a direct message, that's super easy and super effective. So I don't know if that gives you a few ideas, Miguel, around, around like how you can maybe take this to the next level. Oh, one, one more thing too. Um, sending them that message is very important. It's not enough just to add them um, because like if you add them and then let's say one month, two months, five months down the line, they're like, oh yeah, that one person added me or if you're that lucky, but they won't remember your name, right? So there, most people don't have the patience to scroll down through the hundreds of friends that they have on Facebook and try to remember who you were. It's much easier for them to just find you on their inbox, right? And they're like, oh yeah, I have them on my inbox, yep. right? And it's like, that's, that's how I got lucky with that one. They reached out. Um, so I have another one too that I have, I, have a, um, I have a consult scheduled for tomorrow and I added her like a month ago. But she found me like super easy because I was already in her inbox. And yeah. I post too on social, but you just got to make it easier for them to find you. Yeah, some great hey, I'll, I'll, I'll add on that um, just because I've been getting a lot of interaction on social media too. I was listening to a podcast and I can't remember exactly which one it was, but the, they were talking about like basically social media strategy, strategies. And uh, one of the guys was saying that he actually sets up time on his calendar where he's going to go on for an hour and just interact with his followers and, and build new followers, but also not just like adding and messaging someone because we don't know how many messages they get in their inbox, but also like interacting like on their post too, like maybe writing a comment, right? Because you don't know who else is going to see that, uh, but just wanted to throw that out there. If you're engaging with them, right? Like they're going to notice those things. Because uh, unfortunately, when people post stuff, they go back and to see who liked it and who commented, right? Like, that's just the way it is. 
oh, I got a comment, right? Like your phone's always dinging and ringing like every time someone comments on you. So if you're dropping comments in, in, on people's posts, like they're gonna remember who you are. Like you're slowly building this relationship with them through social media. Um, I had a guy reach out to me. Um, he added me and he was selling some sort of coaching service. And then he sent me a direct message and he sent me a video. And you could tell it was, um, it was a candid video. Like he, was, it, he wasn't all dressed up or nothing. He was at home or whatever, or like in his little office. And it was kind of a general video, like, hey, man, I just want to reach out to you. We just connected. Like, you know, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm doing. If I can help you in any way, you know, let me know. Here's my contact info. Um, but he probably sends that to, like, a bunch of people. But now, like, I remembered who he was, and now I see him on my feed. And now I'm, like, I'm paying more attention to this guy now because he did all those things. You know, so I think once you start sending people a personal message or a personal video, their radar kind of goes off now where they're noticing you more, right? You're creating mind share with them. You know, so it's, it's by doing that multi-layered approach that it's going to be more effective and, and there's going to be more quality to this database that you're creating. Enrique, I just want to like uh, kind of reference that too. I think like the, the two things I always think about when we're talking about these topics are attention and trust. Um, and so like with what you guys are talking about, you're getting people's attention, which is great. And there's, and there's no way to do anything besides initially just get attention. Like with what you just said, Enrique, right. Which is like, Hey, this guy now has your attention. And then the, the sinker is then him being able to build trust with you, which is ultimately going to build that like deep relationship where even if you didn't talk to him for two years, trust is there. So you're able to have that conversation regardless um but really really cool stuff that's just the two kind of bullet points that i always think about when you guys are talking about this i like that i like that and how do you build trust right like that let's peel that back a little bit um i think trust is is also going to come in the form of you being consistent right the more consistent people can see that you are like if they know you're always giving value you're always giving tips they begin to formulate you know their opinion of you right they begin to see like, okay, this person is, is someone of value. This person is always giving good information that builds trust. If you only post one time, yeah, that may have been a good video or may have been a good, some good information, but if they don't see it over and over and over and over, it's, it, it came and it went, right? So trust is something that is built over time by someone seeing that you're doing something consistently and you showing up consistently, right? Where they can they can predict now what type of person you are. So it, consistency is gonna be the key element to I think building trust in, in whatever you're doing. Awesome guys, let's switch gears. Any other topics? What do you need help on? Or what's working really well for you? Is there anything that you're doing right now in your business that you think is working really well that you can share with others? Uh, I mean, I'm sure everybody's in it social media but facebook ad, advertising facebook ads paid facebook ads is really where it's at um i think over the past three i want to say since friday of last week so almost a week now i have about 117 or so new leads um through facebook i mean a lot of online lead is is about about a three to four percent conversion for facebook and a lot of it is in follow-up. Um, and for me right now with fueling my business, I just had two closings from leads that I met over a year ago. So it's all follow-up because a lot of people that I'm meeting right now in this crazy market aren't able to buy because they haven't had the time to prepare themselves for how crazy the market is. So I've been following up with the leads because that's the people that have had a year, year and a half, maybe two years to save more and more money. But Facebook advertising is where it's at. I recently made the switch to allow a company to run everything for me since I don't think I was capable of scaling it to the, to the level I wanted to scale it to. Um, but I think that that's a big one. Facebook advertising should be a move for everybody. You should all look into it because you could get leads pretty cheaply. Awesome, man. Are you, so what's, what's your, like those hundred something leads that you got, what is your, um, how much are you spending? How much did you have to spend to get those leads and what kind of, uh, are you sending them to like a landing page or something where they got to fill out information or tell us a little bit more about that? 
So I have a few different ads. It really just depends. Um, right now we are running dynamic ads, which shows a live feed of current listings in that target area. For example, in Turlock, it'll show all the newest listings in Turlock. And then if they click through either one of the carousels, which is just a listing, it takes them to my website and then of course register and then we track them through there. Um, additionally, I do run face, first time buyer ads, which is more directed towards first time buyers. And that's just information then to contact them and then the process just follow up and getting them in to get approved. Um, the dynamic ads is really just staying in front of them. So stay in front of them, stay on the website, send them the listing daily, weekly, whatever you set them up for. And then of course, retargeting them and having them come back to you and just remember you. So essentially you follow them online everywhere. You know, like when you click on Amazon product and now you see it everywhere you go and you see it and see it and see it until you actually buy it. That's the, the whole idea behind of it. Alfredo, do you have any like references <clears throat> that you that help you like kind of guide you on how to run these ads on like how to really show so, <clears throat> yeah um last i think 2020 when COVID happened i, I was really struggling i had just made the switch to full time and around may or june i had my manager show me this ad and he's like hey you should do something like this so i tried it at first and a week later I had um, my first client and then closing but I looked up some YouTube videos. That's where I started. Um, there's this guy, Mike uh, Sherrod, I think it's his last name. He calls himself the Purple Realtor. You can't miss him. Um, and then I started run, watching more and more videos. And then as you go, you kind of learn how to run these ads and understand them. And then, of course, um, there's Facebook Academy, which they explain how the ads work. But now I am with um, YLopo. Don't know if you've heard of them. There's a lot of like companies out there. But now YLopo is doing it for me um, because because I wanted to scale it, but you could definitely do it on your own. Uh, how long have you been with Y Lopo? Cause I've actually looked into them. Um, so we, I've signed up two weeks ago um, that 117 or so leads did come through their system. Um, so that's all of them now. Uh, I'm not running any of my own ads anymore. We currently just went over the design for the website. They've been amazing. I mean, no, no complaints at all there. They're, they're support team is insane and they have somebody for everything. I mean, they're always available. That's cool, man. Let's start. Yeah. And I, I think the big key guys is, is whatever, whatever ad source, however you're getting your leads. I mean, Alfredo said a good point. It's all in the follow-up. You know what I mean? Like he's closing deals yeah. today that he got the lead a year ago, you know? So, um, you know, my experience with leads is, you know, it's the leads are not hard to get. There's different ways you can get leads, right? Whether you're doing Facebook ads or you're have another source that's referring them to you. It's the conversion. That's the hard part, right? That's the hardest yeah. part is converting these and, and staying in front of them and continuing to deliver value. And when they're actually ready to make a move, you know, you're the one that they choose to work with. Um, is there anything in addition that you're doing to follow up, to stay in touch with these leads? Um, so everything's going through my CRM. Um, I, I finally integrated after being an agent for, I think a year and so months, finally integrated into a CRM and I bounced around a lot until I found the one. Um, the one for me ended up being follow up boss and follow up boss has something called smart lists. So you could categorize people into different um, lists. And this allows me to know which people I should call based on the last time I talked to them. So, follow up that is what i'm doing it's a i go through there every single day a lot maybe an hour or two hours depending what the day looks like and go through the system and see okay these are the people i need to call today these are the people i need to send listings to these are the people i need to send a message to and etc a lot of follow-up sadly with online leads i followed up with people like i just had a closing that i followed up with this guy for a year i mean for seven months i didn't hear a peep i didn't hear anything back just on red 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 whatever you acknowledge the text, you read it. I know you read it. <laughs> then month eight guys like, okay, I'm ready to go again. Let's get proof. Let's do this. And, um, we closed it. So that is what I'm doing for following up. Um, it's just a constant follow-up no matter what it is, whether it be every three months or if it's a really hot lead that said they're need to move in the next three, three months, then it's almost every week. It really just depends, but yeah. And then some do get put on, additionally, they also get put on a drip system. So like email campaign and then through YLOPO now there's 
um, they have their automated texting platform. If you have looked at it, they have, um, they call it Raya, which is their AI, AI texting and, and she's awesome as well. Awesome. Good stuff, man. Um, I like that. Anybody else? What are some of your sticking points right now with your business or anything that's working really well for you that you want to share with people? Come on, don't be shy. Mauricio, we'll call on you, brother. Hey guys, um, so something that's, I mean, one thing that I have been focusing on, it's uh, nothing new, nothing crazy. Like what I do, do now that I stopped doing, you know, since I started here was going back to the basics. Just like, it's all just basic stuff to me, really. Yeah. There's nothing new that I've done. Um, when I stopped doing that, I started focusing more on my clients and not, uh, focusing less on generating new business. It kind of slowed down. And then I went back to the basics, which is to follow up, all that stuff. And it's just now it's picking back up again. So nothing new is just back to the basics for me. I like that. No, I, and I think that's important, right? We, we talked about that in our meeting the other day. Of we did. You have to, uh, you have to set time in your day when you're, when you're prospecting and you're going after a new business. And that's, that, that becomes trickier when you have clients that you're working on, because in our minds, serving our clients is more important sometimes than finding new clients. Right. But it's yeah, actually, yeah. they're actually equal, right. They're equal parts of the business, right. Developing new, new leads and new business and new appointments and new clients to meet with is just as important as serving your existing clients. You know, so I think um, for agents of all levels, we have to remind ourselves that that has to be a crucial part of our business. We have to generate new business every single day. There has to be time in your day when you're only focused on new business development. And then there has to be time when you're focused on just serving your, your existing clients, right? Mm -hmm. So let's peel that back, right? Like new, new business development is, that's your prospecting, that's calling your leads back, that's trying to book an appointment, that's doing the follow-up call of some guy that said to call you in three, you know, call him in three months. Um, that's sending that text, like, hey, did you get my proposal? Like that's basically trying to close or trying to book either an appointment or, or right? That's, that's basically what it is, right? You're trying to drum up some new business. Um, right, right. And then also else. like, I mean, just going, oh, no, I was saying, I'm um, also like, cause like with, with my leads, there was like, cause I always get new leads. Um, and I was noticing that I would just every morning, you know, 9 AM, I would start from the newest lead and start trickling down to the oldest ones. Um, but every morning I would start from the top. So all the older ones were getting kind of left out. Um, and then I kind of just went backwards. I went from my oldest one and trickled down to the newest ones. Um, and there was stuff that I totally forgot people that I forgot about. That I just put them on campaigns, that, you know, once a week for a month, checked in with them. Um, some did respond. It's like, hey, you know, I'm close. Just got to work some few things out. But thanks for keeping up. Um, checking with me again. So basically what I did yesterday, I just put everyone on, on all my campaigns that were already expired. Put them back on and just kept going back to that. Um, and then there was one uh, that I was working with Enrique. He was a seller. Super excited connected with him met with him actually gave him an offer and then completely just ghosted us ghosted me enrique and i just kept following up kept following up called uh, for my phone number our firepoint phone number from different numbers and uh i checked in with him again i was like honestly i was about to throw him back into our pond just like, he's he's out completely out but i just said let me just call him one more time i called him he answered and he was like, you know, I am interested. I do want to sell. I just have to figure something out. So his situation was that he has another house that he wants to move into, but he's renting it out. And the tenant has a house that he's going to move into. So he has to wait for that to happen, for this to happen, for this to happen. So he said, call me back July 5th. He's like, I'm going to be busy for the July, obviously. I was like, all right, Wayne, I'm going to call you July 5th. Let's get the ball rolling then. Sound fair? He said, perfect. I'll expect your call. So I was about to pond it, but I was like, let me just try one more time. And then 
Who would have known? How many? Or who would have thought? How many times? Uh, because me and you are working on this one. How many times yeah. did, you call, did you call him and he just didn't respond? Dude, I was I was calling him like when he was hot hot, like when we were ready to submit the offer on him, and every day for about two weeks, and then maybe once a week for the next month, and then once every two weeks, and then it just kind of started falling off. Um, and I was going through all my old leads. And I was like, let me just check in with this guy one more time. And then, yeah, he's like, hey, I know I've been, you know, kind of distant. I'm still interested. Call me back July 5th and I'll let you know where things are at. But uh, like, uh, I forgot who it was. He said, follow up, man. He, he did a follow up yeah, for seven I, months, I month eight. It hit. And uh, like I said, that's going back to the basics for me. I used to follow up all the time. Started, you know, focusing on other things, um, but just going back to the basics and following up. And, and uh, that has... Uh, worked a lot in the past, so just back to the basics. There we go. Awesome, man. Fortune is in the follow up. That's what they say, right? Fortune's in the follow up. Yep. It's all about the basics. <laughs> it is. Uh, excellent. Um, any questions, guys? Anybody else on here? What do you got for me? What's a sticking point in your business right now? What's an area you want to grow in in your business? What's something you're having success with? I have one more thing that I've started doing in the past month or so. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, but it's a time blocking schedule. And I have a coach that I'm, I was meeting with once a month and she's like, Hey, you know what? Cause she's actually my transaction coordinator and, and we've been, she's been very involved in my business since I started. She's like, Hey, you know what? You don't really manage your time. Well, this is what you need to do. This is, you know, you need to, you need to figure out what, what you're doing with your time because I find myself really distracted and procrastinating. So just really quick time blocking. I found this schedule on Google. It's a 30 minute daily planner. What I tend to do is I'll map it out and then I'll keep a blank with me. That way I could actually track what my actual day looked like. So I could say I did one thing, you know, planned the night before. And then um, the next day I will actually follow the schedule. And if I, if I miss something or add something, for example, the Zoom, I wasn't expecting it. But Thomas sent it to me this morning. So I was like, you know what? I'll I'll make the time for it. So now I have to change my, my time block for the day because I moved whatever I was doing at this time to another time. Um, and then one more thing she, she told me that has been helping a lot is having a to-do list and leaving it on your desk the night before. Because then when you get into the office, it's the first thing you look at and you will make sure you actually do those things that you needed to do today. So you stay really, really, really organized. That's awesome. That's some good, that's some good advice. Um, and think about it guys, like this is not rocket science, right? Like this is not anything like super crazy or super high level. Um, most of us struggle and I think everyone struggles with just time management, right? Because we're constantly like getting pulled in different directions and we're constantly evaluating the priority of a certain thing going on, right? And we're just putting things in, in front of each other, right? Like we you know we're supposed to do this, but this seems more like more priority. So we, we do that first. So um, I really like that you bring that up because that the difference between someone producing at a high level and someone producing at a mediocre level, it's really about time management. It's about how they use their time because we all have the same 24 hours in a day. Um, it's not necessarily working harder right? Some people just need to work harder. Let's just get that out there, right? Some people are, aren't working hard enough, but if assuming everyone's working hard, it now becomes, you know, the challenge against, are we working smart and are we utilizing our time and are we efficient with those hours that, that we're, you know, we're working, you know, so starting off your day with a time blocking sheet or a spreadsheet or a to-do list, you know, that should be the first thing that we're doing every single day. Like, before you go into email and before you get pulled in a thousand different directions, like you need to say, Hey, this is what I'm doing today. This is the list. These are the things I got to get checked off my list today. And every day you're, you know, you're just checking those off, you know, and in a week you checked off, you know, 50 things, you know, in a month it's a couple hundred things. Right. And then, you know, that, that keeps going. Um, so I really like that, man. It's, it's, it's all the, the coaching that we've gotten, it's a lot of it has just really been about being more productive and more efficient with, the, with our business, right? How do you duplicate yourself? How do you get more things done in the same amount of time? Um, it's all extremely important. So good stuff. What else do we got guys? What's uh, something else? 
What's working for you? What's some area you want to improve on? So I'm actually going to um, oh, okay. add to what Alfredo said. Well, actually, uh, commit to what Alfredo said is uh, I have been bad about time blocking. So I think, uh, and, and I've been just watching videos on time blocking and why it's super important. Um, and like I said, you know, leave, leave that note on your desk so you can, that's the first thing you see. Um, and I think that will make a huge change. So that's something I have been like, I've just been kind of throwing this stuff around and just, I'm um, do this here, now this, and just like basically schedule my stuff on, basically on that time. Like during like, all right, I'm gonna do this right now. Instead of tomorrow, this is what I need to get done. So I think time blocking is uh, something I really, really need. Uh, and I'm going to commit to time blocking, you know, between today and next Wednesday. I'll give you guys a sheet of what I've done for my whole schedule. There we go. There we go, man. Let's make it happen. I got one. Um, you know what's been uh, working for me? Uh, Real Estate Growth Academy. That's been working for me. So I took... <laughs> The very first meeting, I think it was the first one with the, uh, what we talked about were the uh, FHA buyers. Man, so that, that's how I was able to get um, two, two leads like that in like high price point FHA buyers, right? The max, like 850. Um, one, one realtor worked with this client a year ago. They spent the whole year looking and just couldn't get into contract, right? And then this other buyer that I got signed yesterday, the realtor just straight up told them before showing them any properties, like you need a hundred K to cash to like win in this market. Right. So she was like, forget you, you helped my dad buy, but you don't want to help me, but you're already discouraging me. Right. So she reached out to me, man. So pretty much like what we, what I took from that first meeting was making the, your strengths, I mean, your weaknesses in that, in that loan program, your weaknesses, your strength. So basically it's like being upfront. Yeah, like talking to the listing agent. Hey, I specialize, even if you don't, but I specialize on FHA loans and I've been having great success. And I know there's a clause that allows my buyers to back out, but hey, they're so motivated that we're willing to continue, move forward and willing to offer you five, 10K over appraised value right it's situational with your buyer um but kind of covering those bases right covering those bases um and uh and agents you know it's situational but it, it's been working for me and then um preemptive offers with fha like it's you know i'm in a counter situation right now where you see a property coming on the market um and you just kind of play just go preemptive go strong through, you know what I mean? You know, going through, talking to your clients, you know, going over the numbers with them, making sure that everything looks good and makes sense to them. They can afford those monthly payments, right? Being all on the same page and making strong preemptive FHA offers. And that's what I took from the first meeting, man. It's, I'm going on, hope, knock on wood, I don't want to jinx myself, but this this will be like my second in contract with an FHA buyer. First one on a single family residence, because of these meetings and just kind of like brainstorming together and coming up with the best strategies for different loan types. Like that was like super awesome. That's awesome, man. Um, you know, I, I know sometimes we're discouraged from working with FHA buyers, depending on what market you're in, but we're getting them in contract guys, right? Like it's, it's, it's happening. You gotta be strategic. Definitely. Um, Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's the, the seller has a, a unique, can have a unique situation, right? Where they want to get in contract right away because maybe they're buying another home or something like that. So I think um, it's crucial that you're connecting with the listing agent before you submit an offer and you're finding out all of the details, you know, on what the seller needs, what their expectations are, um, how much time they need, do they need a rent back? Back, all of those things. Sometimes we're just assuming that we got to be the highest price and no contingencies. That's not the case all the time, right? Because anybody who is selling right now is more than likely buying something else, right? So it, it's it's just that you got to do a little digging, right? So that you can you know um, place your client in the best position to win. So I like that you're you're bringing that up. Yeah, and it's like. You know, sometimes we get into our own head where we kind of think that there's going to be this resistance on the listing side. You never know. Maybe they're a rookie listing agent, 
right? Like, right? So it's kind of like understanding that, um, basically playing that game. I call it the game of chicken. Like, here's my best offer. And yeah. then, you know, there's so many ways to play it, but um, it's working. And then, yeah, I just got countered right now. <laughs> and then I thought it was like, they're not countering me for a contingency removal fully. And we're fully contingent on a single family home. We just, is it just the request for washer and dryer? <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> That's the deal, I think. <laughs> like, Black Friday's around the corner. Shoot, I'll fucking buy the washer and dryer. So I see that <laughs> there we go, bro. That's a done okay. deal. Wrap that up. Get it it not too work. easy, bro. Too no. easy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for a real estate growth academy. <laughs> there we go, bro. Glad you're applying some of this information into your business. Uh, let's see how we're doing on time. We got just a couple more minutes left, guys. Let's take one more and then we'll wrap this up. Tell me something good. Tell me an area you want to grow in. Um, don't be shy. No, nope, 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 nope. What's the challenge? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's make a challenge. Let's do a challenge for this, this next week. Those of you who want to participate, we can participate. Um, what's something, oh, maybe, let's do this because it could be different for everybody, right? And you guys can report back. It doesn't have to be a universal challenge, but what's something that you want to hold yourself accountable to in this next week? We're going to meet back here next Wednesday again, same time. What's something you want to do and check off your list by next week? that you want to hold yourself accountable to and you want to put it out there and uh i definitely want to do the time block 50. i think that's something that i'm really like i definitely want to do that so from today it was 11 o'clock until next wednesday i'll show you guys my whole schedule and how i uh, work that out so let's be specific about that right like, like what does that mean? Does that mean like every morning you're going to map out your schedule every morning for how many days? Like, let's, what's be specific about what you're going to do. I'm probably, I mean, today, I guess I'll just start late and just map out my schedule between now and the rest of my day. And mm -hmm. then tonight map out my schedule for the next day and then just do it every night, set it up for the next day. Okay. I have one thing to say about the time blocking is that we tend to spend like a lot all day at the office because we feel like we have so much work. Dude, you'll get your work done in like four hours, five hours. It'll be 1 p.m. You're like, oh shit, like I got nothing else to do. It's like, you know what? Maybe it's time to go home and, and I'm going to take 1 p.m. to 10 p.m. today just for me because I've handled everything I had to handle. You'll love time blocking. Trust me. There we go. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to play with it. I'm going to play with it. And I'll let you guys know how, how it went. There we go. All right. Yeah. I like that. And there's no rules to this game, right? Like we're sometimes we're playing by rules that don't exist. Like no one says you have to come in and work for eight hours or 10 hours or 12 hours. Like you got to just come in and be productive, whatever that means for you based off your personal goals. Right. That's what it should be. So if you got, you know, five things you got to get done and you come in and you knock those out because you're laser focused and you're, you don't have no distractions and you get them done in four or five hours. Like Alfredo says, like, that's you getting your time back, right? Now go do something for yourself. Go enjoy your time with your family. Go do something you really want to do for you outside of, you know, business. So I like that, man. Who wants the uh, accountability? What do you, what do you want to do in this next week? I'm going to post two videos. Two videos. There we go. I'm with Z. I'm with Z. I'm Two videos for me as well. Two videos. Two, Two videos. videos for me too. Three videos. Uh, I'm going to do two. I'm going to stick to two. <laughs> all, right, all right. So two videos. Two videos. I'm going to write, I'm going to write this down guys. Cause next week I'm going to call you out on it. <laughs> you said you were going to do this. So What's the consequence. Uh, the consequences you get to fail in front of everybody here on this chat, right? That's your consequence. <laughs> uh, let's go Mauricio. He's going to time block and two videos. Okay. Um, Z two videos. Z I also want to challenge you to book your next vacation. 
I'm not even gonna lie, I just did this morning. <laughs> oh, <there's- laughs> I booked one for the end of June and one for August. So there we go. Right on, Z. Oh, let me do let me rephrase that. The vacations are good, but let I want you to I'm gonna challenge you to book a time during the week where it's just your time, right? It's your time to go do something fun that you want to do that has nothing to do with work. Okay. I think that's a that's a challenge. Um, book some me time. Who else said they're gonna do videos, Jason? Two videos. Hervin, what was your challenge? Uh, same, two videos. Two videos. Anybody else? Hey, Enrique, it's Thomas. Uh, so I'll do two, two videos as well. Two videos on social. Let's go. I'll do two videos. I'm going to try days. to wake up at 5.30 every day for now until Wednesday. I've been trying to get up earlier and earlier, but I'll, I'm going to try to hit the gym every single morning and stay committed to it. On the weekend too, Alfredo? Or just during the week? <laughs> weekend too. I actually have a have a busy weekend coming up, so I think I should stay stay on the schedule and and, and just keep on at it. Hey, quick, Alfredo, what, one of the things that I do to wake up early is I have my gym clothes right by the side of my bed, and I literally just roll right out of bed and just throw that on. <laughs> and then go straight. My gym's in my garage right now because of COVID. <laughs> But that oh, okay. is, I don't even brush my teeth, man. I just like, boom, roll right into it. And I, get, <laughs> and, I, and I pound a thing of black coffee, black coffee, just hit that. And I'm in my gym. And, and that's, I do it pretty consistently. I would say at least four, about four times a week, you know, out of seven days, at least four to five times a week. That's, that's my, my thing that I do. Okay. Awesome. Let's go. Um, Steve, what's up, bro? You want you want to join the challenge? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let, let, I have to pick out something good, right? Because I'm always on social media doing videos, so we can't do that. Uh, let's think of something uh, challenging right now. What would you think would be something that uh, would challenge me? It's it's going to be anything, man. It could be anything that applies to your business or your life. Some maybe something you want to just get done in the next week. You know, let's say, let's say I'm gonna add another uh, three realtors to my uh, my my uh, my connection. Okay, so add uh, three more uh, realtors to your your database or to your network, right? To my network. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Excellent. Okay. Cool. Uh, so this is Growth Academy challenge. I'm trying to think of some. I want to participate in this too. So I'm trying to think of uh, what. You know what? Gonna I, be. I want to add a little something else. I think I'm going to do some um, some marketing videos that you'll start to see. I've been been procrastinating about that. I think it's time to do it. So, how many videos? Uh the, these marketing. Uh, there'll be two videos every. But we're, we'll start with two videos. Two videos. Okay. So two videos by next week. Some sort of uh, marketing. Some educational content. Yep. There you go. Awesome. Awesome. Um, for me, something I really got to get off on my list right now is I got to get, um, I recorded a video already, but I got to get it uploaded and I get, a, I got to get it deployed to our whole entire database. It's a home seller tip. So I got to send that out. Uh, that's one of them. And then I got to, uh, make sure our new office gets furnished no, it's a good and one. it's ready to rock. Next Wednesday. Um, that's something that one of my goals. Office furnished. Okay. Um, so there we go. That's what we got, guys. Um, our time is up. I appreciate you guys showing up. Hopefully, you guys got some value out of this. Uh, we'll see you guys next week, same time, same channel. Uh, if you'd like to invite anyone, guys, please share the link. It's open invite to any you know real estate mortgage professionals, um, even any complimentary businesses that go kind of with, with what we do. Um, it's open to them as well. And don't forget guys to take action, take something that you learned today, you know, that one thing or those two little nuggets guys and, and go back and, uh, and apply them to your business. Let's take some action and then also pay it forward. If there's anybody out there you see struggling, like pass it on, take the time to help somebody else guys. That's what this thing's all about. Um, appreciate you guys. We'll see you next week. 
Have a good one. Thanks, Peter. Later, guys. See you guys later.